Alright, well, welcome to the next installment of our trailer build. Sorry about the wind. I have made my drive, made a stop at my steel distributor. I love these guys. I've been going to them for 20 plus years now. Picked up some gusset material and some two square, two inch square tube and then some more stuff in the back of the truck. And I will explain to you what's going on from here. So for now, let's get going. Well, we had some cold weather last night, so when I got up this morning, came outside, it was pretty frosted. So I decided to do some video editing for about an hour or so, and the sun's out now, it should warm up, and we can start organizing things. Kind of got a garage to reorganize, we're going to get the razor put back in the storage side of the garage, clean out my workshop here, and we'll, uh, we'll get going on this trailer project. Uh, I'm going to do some grinding and welding and some cutting and... Hopefully we get through all that today and we can make this part three. So let's get working. Well, I don't think I could have been any closer to hitting that corner of the garage and my power washer than I was. That was kind of crazy. So we learned a couple things. I was checking out as we went. First of all, front driver's side tire isn't locking up, which is confusing since that's probably one of the best connections I had, but we'll dig into that and figure that out. Then when this thing is jacked around as far as it can, I still have plenty of cord in the box, so no matter how far we turn this, I am not going to run out of uh, cord space and it's not going to be yanking out of the plug, so that's a positive. Uh, what else did we learn? The angle on the box here is still a little bit low, lower than what I'd like to see. It The, the trailer isn't completely level, level, completely level with the truck, but here's my thought on that. When we load the trailer up, it's going to squat the truck a little bit especially when you have a machine sitting on top there because basically all the weight of the machine and a good amount of weight at the trailer will be on the truck so I'm thinking we're gonna be perfect um, it is it's a noticeable angle but this trailer is really light it's 
it didn't squat the truck at all. It's basically just sitting there on top of the fifth wheel plate. So uh, I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say we're gonna be perfect height. So we're gonna get the uh, truck unhooked and we're gonna get to grinding here. Hope you're liking this time lapse thing. This is my first attempt. Should have kept it on time lapse and showed you the little contraption I made to crank it down. This thing takes forever to crank up and down. I still had to block it up. Uh, the new power jacks we're getting for it are gonna solve that problem. But for now, we'll use our every mechanical advantage we can get. So here she is. We are going to start grinding. And not grinding so much, but just cleaning rust off the top the top edge. My goal for today is to get the outside framed in and get that center bar put in. And there's not a lot to do to get to that point. So we're going to clean off the top edge, get everything tacked up, and then start working on the bumper. All right, so we cleaned off the top rails. Um, we're not going for 100% shiny steel here. Uh, that would just be taking too much of it off. It's all pretty solid. Um, right in here where that went through and then here, it's a little sketch, but by the time we're done reinforcing and putting gussets and all this stuff, um, this thing is gonna be a tank. And I just finished taking the uh, grinding cutoff wheel uh, we are cutting the ends of these off so uh, there wasn't no point in cutting that second part off but we're going to cut these off flush on both sides and then uh, put on our we're going to butt weld some more and then attach it to the bumper uh, but i took the cutoff wheel around nipped off some stuff well, you see i had a little a couple issues here i blew through a few uh cutoff wheels not sure if they were damaged before or if I just hit the wrong thing, but some of these, when you cut them, it'll actually clamp down like that back, that last one I just finished doing. It, when it finished cutting, it actually clamped down on the cutting wheel and blew the wheel apart. So I think I went through like three or four cutting wheels. Uh, that little flapper disc on the other grinder, that cleaned up really well. And it's still in really good shape. So um, I think it'll last for everything we're gonna do on the trailer. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna go grab some lunch now or we're gonna start tacking stuff up. Actually, you know what? I think we're gonna measure out the back end and we'll cut those pieces off before we go grab some lunch. So let's get on that. Okay, so what I did was, the total length of the deck is gonna be 18 feet, okay? I measured this up at 17 foot one inch. I have eight inch pieces that are cut over there to butt weld and gusset here. So after that, we're gonna put a bumper on the other side. So that's gonna add four inches. Now, if you're doing the math in your head like I did, you're gonna understand that that ends us an inch shy of 18 feet. Now, just bear with me. The bumper comes out to here. The actual frame of the deck is gonna be 18 feet. So it'll be inset an inch. Now I did that because of this. Yes, I cheaped out. I'm not gonna cut the grommet holes and do that for my tail lights. I'm sorry, I'm not that skilled. So what I did do was get a nice set of LED lights and I measured it. And this is just shy from 
top to bottom, it is just shy of an inch tall. So that's where the extra inch is going to be. I am not a perfect driver and you know things happen. So I want to protect my tail lights the best I can so that'll give me enough room to basically back this trailer into something and potentially protect my tail lights from you know damage. Uh, that's why I did that. Those are my measurements. I'm gonna go grab some lunch. Before we continue on I wanted to stop and appreciate a view here for a second. Okay we just got back from our daddy daughter trip to Tennessee and here sits the razor it is in the storage side of the garage generally after our trips you'll find it here in pieces so just to kind of admire that for a second no broken parts in Tennessee I got plans we got things we're gonna do but definitely uh, ended our trip on a high note with uh, nothing snapped, broken, destroyed, or needing to be immediately replaced. So, all right, back to work. All right, I found some square, or some angle iron here, a couple clamps, got our back end here mocked up. Gonna do some measurements, double check our, uh, that they're straight. We're gonna weld these babies on. Uh, there is a gusset plate that's gonna go right here. So I'm not gonna weld too thick. Uh, I got a little bit of a gap there, so that's going to be good. Um, yeah, that's going to get a gusset plate on both sides, so it won't be no issues there. Plus, we're going to have that 2x2 two two going all the way across the top here, so we're going to be good to go here in a minute. Alright, well, I'll do a lot of stuff in the rain, but welding's not one of them. Okay, so we got the front laid out. The welder moved over. I'm going to get this squared up, pushed up against the front here as best we can because uh, again we want this to be our base, a solid base for our deck. And the deck is going to be 18 feet from here all the way to the back. So we're going to get this squared up and get her tacked on for now. Okay, no time lapse on this one. I'm finding out editing a time lapse is a lot of work. Uh, got her squared up, got her welded on, and I got another rainstorm coming in, so we're going to pack up for a few minutes again and see what happens. Next thing we're going to do is throw those 10 foot, 7 inch pieces? I can't remember. It ends up to be 18 feet anyways. We're going to throw those pieces on next and get them welded in, and then we'll throw the end pieces on and we'll be done for today. Alright, it's been a couple days. Uh, let me fill you in what you missed if you haven't figured it out already. I uh, did some primer on everything that we'd uh, ground off and put on fresh. I'm going to have to admit a mistake here. When I cut the frame, I cut it two inches short. The reason I did that was because I had forgotten what, the way I had my piece for the bumper cut. When I was doing my math, I thought the bumper was going to go here and it's a two inch wide bumper. Well, then I remembered after I'd cut everything and started to clamp this down was that I'd cut the bumper to go in here. Now, this is not the end of the world and it's really not that big a deal other than it slowed me down a bit. Um, I'm gonna use the piece that I had cut up front. There's a spot up front that I was gonna use it when we box in the, uh, the front cabinet. So it's not gonna be wasted and tomorrow I have to head to Midland anyways so I'm gonna stop and get a 77 and a half inch uh, piece cut along with a couple of the little pieces I'm gonna figure out before I go in so that's what's kind of slowed me down otherwise this whole top would have been put on by now um, so we live and learn made a mistake very fixable mistake um, it didn't even really change my calculations I just had the wrong piece but for today uh, today's Monday Tuesday we're going to Midland so Today I'm going to take some time, um, as good as this primer covered, and as much as it took just to do what I did, I think I'm going to run the, the grinder, grinder down the side here. Um, this frame is a lot sturdier than, than it looks, so I'm going to take the top layer of rust off, you know, just lightly with this grinder, and use this Krylon primer that I got, and we're going to coat the, at least get the outsides of the frames coated today. I still have to go to work tonight, so 
we'll make this a quick project. Uh, I've been fighting the weather and fighting daylight and everything, so I've been kind of moving along without you. Sorry about the wind. Uh, we got the back bumper put on. We have finished the top subframe reinforcement bar, whatever you want to call. Uh, I got that part, that side primer. Uh, all we got to do is primer and paint, or primer the uh, back bumper and this side. But before we go any farther, I'm going to cut out this center section here. And I've got another piece of two inch square tube in there that we're going to run from here to here. And then I have a whole another center section we're going to run right down the middle here. Uh, it's going to be considerably less welding since there's not a ton to weld it to. But uh, it is definitely going to come in handy and we're going to make this a lot stronger. So um, that's the next step. Like I said, I'm fighting daylight, so I'll get you as much as I can, but we're going to keep moving here. All right. Well, that's it for today. We got... The let's call it the subframe support, I guess. All welded up just like I wanted. I've got the bumper put on, recessed from the 18 feet for our lights. Everything is welded all the way across. We're doing our best to coat and clean up all the rust as we go. I mean, I feel like this trailer could be as old as I am, so there's definitely going to be rust issues in the future, but we'll just keep cleaning and keep repainting and keep fixing. So, thanks for watching. We're going to end uh, part three here. I have to kind of go back to the drawing board here for a second and figure out what we're going to do next because there's some reconstruction that I want to do up here that's going to allow to put the jacks in. Uh, there's also gussets we're going to put in the frame. Uh, a few different places so I gotta kind of decide which is the next best step to go here or we could just build the deck which at this point would not be terribly hard to throw it on there or the supports are ready for it so we'll uh, we'll hit the books and see what we do next uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell keep up up uh, with all the adventures here see you in the next video <laughs>